Today, I want to talk about NVIDIA Broadcast. If you don't know about it, it's been out for quite a while. Back in September, when the 3000 series NVIDIA cards came out, they announced it then. And it's a pretty neat beta app that has a few things that I personally really like. And it seems to be a pretty great asset for streamers who want to take advantage of what they have to offer. So the first one, obviously, is going to be noise removal. And actually, I'm using it right now. The second one is their camera auto framing and background replace. And obviously, I'm using it right now. You can see that I'm not actually sitting where I normally am. So if we go over to that, you can see that we can change the background and also auto frame. So the auto frame is going to follow me as I move around. And I think it's a pretty neat feature. And in fact, it works so well that even when you don't want it to follow you, it will. I missed. <laughs> so all that stuff is well and good, but there is an issue. There's one problem. It's a f vampire. Maybe not a full on Nosferatu, but more like a Robert Pattinson. And I first noticed this when I was fiddling with MSI Afterburner and the clock was higher than it should have been at idle. So I checked the temps and sure enough, it was in the mid 50s. And normally this 3080 Ti, it's usually around the mid to high 30. So that was unusual, unless the fans were on silent. But sure enough, when I looked in the case, the fans are running. So I knew that wasn't the problem. So after some searching to figure out what that problem was, I finally turned off NVIDIA broadcast that was running in the background at the time. The clock went down and the temperature started to drop immediately. So after doing some searching, it seems like this has been an issue for quite a while. In fact, since it was released, it's been an issue. So what I want to do is actually demonstrate this for you. So what I have to do is actually use my camera to record the screen because if I do a screen capture with the PC, it's going to use that power from the GPU and it's going to mess up this whole thing anyway. So just keep that in mind. All right, so we've got HW Info here. we got the GPU temperature here at the top. It's been idle for a minute or two. It's at 40 right now. It's pretty hot in this room. It's like 27 degrees. we got the GPU clock at 210. GPU power is currently at 35 watts, and the total GPU power of TDP is at 10%, along with GPU fan running at 1200 RPM right now. So that's our baseline. So what we want to do is open broadcast to see what actually happens. So open up broadcast. There it is. Okay, so that's open. And immediately, what we're going to see is the temperature start to rise in the GPU. We see the clock go to 1665 and we see the GPU power jump up to about almost 110 and that's about 31% of the total TDP. So that's not good. You know, we're getting that multiplied by three, essentially the power usage just with this thing idle. It's going to produce more heat. It uses extra electricity for no reason and it's going to have unnecessary wear on your GPU. Now, that's not insanely bad, but at least for me, in the summertime, I don't particularly want more heat in my room. Now, they have implemented a fix a while ago, not always working. In fact, the reason why I figured out this problem was because it wasn't working at the time, and that's that it's supposed to go idle after a little while. So if you're not using it and it's just in the background, it should basically turn off. All right, so there we see it go idle, and that's good. I mean, that's what you want it to do. In fact, it'd be nice if it did that in the first place. So hopefully that works more often than it doesn't, but for me, I'm just gonna turn off the auto start, and that's very simple to do. You just go to the settings here in NVIDIA Broadcast, and you just turn off this auto launch check mark. But one more thing I wanna do is just turn on screen capture here, and we're gonna see that that itself is going to affect and that by itself is going to be an issue when it comes to. This is interesting. This is okay. This is interesting. So what I thought was going to happen is that even though we had the screen capture on, we'd have a similar situation where this clock would be really high, but it seemed like NVIDIA broadcast went idle anyways. And the clock went farther down. We only saw a slight uptick in the energy usage when it was it was like barely anything huh interesting well 
maybe this NVIDIA broadcast is gonna be using more power than I expected. The main thing I really wanna talk about is how this is actually affecting gaming performance. If you're using this when you're streaming, what kind of performance hit are you actually going to get? So that's what I've done. I've tested two games. One is F1 2021 and Metro Exodus. So these both have built-in benchmarks, so it makes it easy to do that. I'll take a look at how those are actually done. But anyways, the first one is Metro Exodus, and this one is kind of hidden. It's not something obvious like it is in F1. What you have to actually do is go to your game directory, go to Steam, go to your Steam apps, common, then go to Metro Exodus, and you'll see right there, you can launch this application, the Metro Exodus benchmark. Make sure, make sure Steam's open first before you actually hit run, or else it won't work. So those are the settings there. It's 1440p, it's on ultra. I did ray tracing on ultra. DLSS is off, reflections ray trace, two times variable rate shading, hair works on, advanced physics on, tessellation at full, and done one run. So the three tests that I'm actually doing, the first one's gonna be with broadcast off, it's off in the background, it's nothing's happening there. The second test is just using the noise cancellation, and then the third test is noise cancellation with the auto framing and background replace like I have here. Now, originally I was gonna do four tests. One of them was gonna be like I had that first test with broadcast off completely, then have it on in the background, but not actually using any of the features. But after doing those tests, it was exactly the same results between those two. So I'm just cutting that out anyways. So let's take a look at the results. So again, run one is at stock with broadcast close. We get an average of 70 frames per second. Run two is with broadcast noise removal on. We get a slight dip of about 6% with an average FPS of 65. Run three, broadcast noise removal, framing, and background replace. This is where we see a much bigger hit with a drop of about 25% with an average FPS of 52. So my first impressions when I did that first test just with the noise removal is that it wasn't a huge hit and I didn't think it was a big deal, but 25% is quite a big hit. I think it's gonna be something you have to keep in mind when you're actually using this for streaming. And if we look at the graphs of each of these tests, we can see that the test with it off is a lot less erratic with either of them on. So even just with the audio, just using the noise removal, we can see it's much noisier than with it off completely. And when you looked at the one that has them both on, the noise cancellation and the noise removal, we can see that it is also busier than just the noise removal. So at least what that looks like to me, it's gonna have a lot more variable frame rates. And of course, we can compare them individually having here their average, their max frame rate, and their minimum frame rate. Next up, we have F1 2021 at Ultra at 1440p, ray traced, DLSS off. It's gonna be three laps in Azerbaijan with the rain on. And this is just in the settings. If you go to the graphic settings, you'll easily find where to do the benchmarking really easy to set up and really handy for this. So the first test is at stock with broadcast closed. We get an average FPS of 93. Run two is with broadcast noise removal on. We get a slight dip of about four to 5% with an average FPS of 89. Lastly, we have noise removal framing and background replace. This is where we see, again, a much bigger drop of almost identically 25% with an average of 70 frames per second. And I think that's a pretty big deal. So if you're gonna be using this for streaming, keep that in mind. You might have to turn down the settings a bit on some particular games, depending on what kind of graphics card you have. I'm thinking if you're, you know, maybe you have like a, a 2060 or something like that, it may be a big deal. Now, I wish I had more graphics cards to test with. I, I only have the 3080 Ti to test this out with. I'm curious to see if it's gonna be a bigger difference on different cards. And for a little more detail, we can look at the actual results from the game itself. So one last thing, let's look at the details from the benchmarks. We have minimum FPS, average FPS, and maximum FPS, also with frame times. And we can see that all of them are affected. Of course, it's the worst with using auto framing, background replace, and noise removal at the same time. I think that's it for this video. So if you're going to be using NVIDIA broadcast, just turn off that auto launch, don't let it start up when you start the computer. You, when you need it, you'll know to turn it on because like, like for example, this is just not gonna work. So you know that. And secondly, when you're actually streaming, just take a look, maybe do some benchmarks yourself. Try it with it on and see what kind of results you get. If you're getting below 60 frames per second, perhaps there's something in the settings that you could turn down a bit to have a more stable frame rate. This has been Tech Literate. My name is Nick. Thank you for watching. 
It didn't even pick that up. Hop, pop. Today I want to talk about. God, this looks terrible. All right, so we got H W O. Winston, you're in the way. You go, kitty. Oh, good boy. Oh, cutie.